Welcome to Centre Court with thanks to CRT. Equine supplies start with CRT. Want a chance to win a 2Z2H straight load horse float? Visit crt.com.au slash equine 2024. T's and C's apply. My name is Sarah Burt and today I'm joined by General Manager of the Melbourne Mavericks, Shay Bolton-Brown. Welcome, Shay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to have you back this week. We are, of course, <laughs> filling in for the usual co-hosts. They are having a well-earned break. Yep. But we are, we've got it today. We're here. We're in charge. We've got it. <laughs> well, Shay, let's get straight into it with the netball wrap. Today, we're going to chat about the Mari Little Shield competition. Since 2013, this competition has provided female athletes with an intellectual disability the chance to compete at the national level. The Mari Little Shield for 2024 took place over the last weekend and for the first time featured teams from every state and territory with a new Tassie team. The competition was made up of two pools of teams and four rounds of matches, followed by a final series that determined bronze, silver and gold. Let's take a look at the ladder after round three. Shay, which team stands out for you? Well, Tazzy is being new into the competition, I think is really exciting. Obviously, we've got a special place in our heart for um, Tasmanian athletes, so it's so exciting that they were there. Um, but you can't go past um, uh, Victoria and New South Wales with absolute standouts and growing up in Victorian pathways, that was a definite standout for me. Love it. Yeah. Here are some of the finals games. Shay, how great is it to see this competition thriving and being celebrated nationally? This is huge. Like, it, I don't think it can be underestimated how amazing this competition is and how professional it is ran. Um, all of the people that are behind the scenes making this thing happen and giving these opportunities for these people um, that might not have those opportunities to be able to flourish and connect and um, have such a great time as you're seeing on the footage. It's just such an remarkable um, thing that I think netball as a sport should be really proud of. Absolutely, you don't see it in every sport and it's really great to embrace all parts of the community, which yeah. we're really proud of. Absolutely. Being part of netball. Let's talk about the gold medal match. Victoria yeah. were unfortunately, as Victorians, <laughs> defeated by New South Wales 13 to 18. Yeah, so um, I, I guess both teams were so um, competitive throughout the, the, the week and yeah, they were um, hats off to New South Wales. Well done to New South Wales. We can't wait to see the Murray Little Shield happening again next year. It's such a great addition to the netball world for all of us. OK, Shay, let's get to the centre court deep dive. We are once again going to chat about the Mavs and discuss <laughs> some specific moments in your inaugural season. Six wins in season 2024, a huge achievement. Which one stands out to you as the best win of the Mavs inaugural season? Oh, one of the many one point absolute <laughs> <laughs> clinches that we were able to snag. It's hard to put. Um, there was actually a few games, and uh, the, the one, the first home win against the Swips was super special to be able to celebrate a win um, with everyone that had brought this team together. Um, you know, we had such a short runway to becoming Maverick um, and everyone in at SEN from the ballpark team, from everyone that put their heart, soul, sweat into it, to be able to celebrate with them in that game was amazing. And that's probably from an administrative side. Then obviously I was, I was, I was with the team um, on the Sunshine Coast for our very first win, which was another um, one goal, which <laughs> uh, like still looking back, I don't know how we won. It was actually unbelievable to have that sort of turn, turn around. But I think, you know, when you look at it more at a macro level and you see that like some of those wins have set the foundations for what we're building as a culture and being able to pull those wins out and um, celebrate them in the way that we did. Um, I said to the girls, you know, quite often, you know, we celebrated hard after wins. Like it was <laughs> something that I think was commented on a bit, like, wow, you didn't win the grand final. I'm like, no, but we won. And, you know, you don't get to win every day of the week as a new club. Um, and so I, I said to the girls, like, lean in. You know, there's so much, um, so much time we spend in high performance thinking about perfection. And so when you win, it's, you know, it's a relief as opposed to, exhilaration and when you lose it's like you're, <laughs> you're gutted yeah exactly for for days weeks at a time <laughs> um, but I said like you know you've got to embrace the joy um sport is about 
joy and inspiration and all of the good things. So um, I think it's definitely been, um, you know, leaning into that has been really good for us and what we're developing. Well, talking about building a culture, that is so important to celebrate the wins. Like you said, what did you guys do to celebrate? Yeah, well, I think it was more just being in each other's company. We always came together after games and made sure that we um, just connected and um, looked out for each other and all the things that just make us so, um, you know, united as a group. I think culture starts with people and people and connections and putting in those hard yards um, early, I think was really important for us. So that started way before we started winning games. Um, you know, the, the team is just such a unique group of girls. Um, you know, we had zero players um, signed this time last year, actually, and we built this team and a lot of them have come from interstate. Most of them have come from interstate. So they're all moving their lives. They all had this massive call to adventure. They'd all just watched a team fall over and then a new one be built. And so there's a lot of risk in that, right? So this group of girls have come together um, under that, those, um, that situation. And I think that that's what's really connected them um, and the staff as well. We've had you know, coaches come internationally. We've had our SNC came from WA. Like, so we really are quite um, protective of the fact that within this is um, a family, yeah. It's pretty insane to think what you just said this time last year, no one was signed and we had just seen Collingwood fall over. That's a really, I suppose the silver lining of that is that it really galvanised you guys to make sure that it didn't happen again, you were going to start on a front foot and, and be really excited. So I'm really glad to hear that, that that's how it came out for you yeah. guys. As we said, your first season in Suncorp Super Netball, I'm sure there was a lot of learnings as well as really positive things that happened. Is there anything specific that you guys will take into the next season? Um, well, personally, building the club, um, I think the number one is don't let perfect get in the way of done. <laughs> um, and, you know, coming from being an athlete myself and, you know, perfection and like I was just saying, um, high performance is about doing everything as best you can. Um, when you have as short a runway as we did and had to come up with, you know, find a venue, find a name, find the players, find coaches, find that like all, the <laughs> list kind of went on. Um, you, we just had to make decisions and, um, you know, there was times that we had to learn by doing and I think actually experiential learning is really important as well and I always look back at what we were doing at this time last year now that we're sort of past that 12 month and go oh my god how far have we come um, and I think that that is something that we isn't like a spirit that we will take into season two not just from like a business perspective but obviously from a, a performance and on-court perspective as well is that you know we we're doers we're going to grind it out we will um, be creative in the way that we're doing it and we're going to think differently we'll be maverick so um, yeah it's it's I think definitely what's setting out um, us up for future success and you know, if you're not learning, then what are you doing? So, um, yeah. I love it. It's in the name. Maverick. Yeah. Maverick by name, Maverick by nature. <laughs> <laughs> well, heading in to season 2025. Yeah. The list is staying relatively unchanged. Can you yeah. talk us through the list decisions? Yeah. So I guess, as we said, we had none. And to be honest, we didn't um, play with our full list in season 2024 for one single game. We had a couple of major injuries in Lauren Moore, now Parkinson, married over the weekend. Congratulations, Congratulations Lozzie. <laughs> um, looked spectacular. Oh, she looked beautiful. Uh, gorgeous. Um, and with Sasha Glasgow, obviously with her major injury as well, we still haven't played with that team that when Tracy and Richard Sinkins and myself sat down and started doing the recruitment, um, we've not played with that list. And so, you know, we want to be able to um, you know, back that in and, and, and see what we can do with that. So there's not many changes and it's because we have seen um, such growth in our team. We knew that that was going to happen. Netball's such a sport of connection um, and having had, you know, in any given year, you might have a list change of like three, four, if you're like, whoa, like let's have a big clean out. There's, it's not very often you have 10. Um, <laughs> so we were starting behind the, the, the starting point. And so I think that being able to um, 
you know, grow those connections throughout the season. We saw such a massive learning curve throughout the year and you saw you know, players like Liv Lewis just go from strength to strength week on week. Kim Jenner with time on court and building that connection with Liv and with um, Christiana in the end and, and Shimona Jock for one game. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, the, 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 these connections I think we want to double down on and really start to see what we can do um, together and see Sash and Loz out there with the girls. Well, it's exciting to discover that depth as well. As you said, you didn't have a lot of time pre-season to get into it. So then to, to really delve into that depth and be able to move around and see what works is really important. And I wonder what it will be for you guys next season. How do you see the list developing and changing throughout the season? Throughout the season, yeah, I think that it is a, netball is such a dynamic game. Like now with rolling subs and 11th players and all of these sorts of things and, and just the nature of how um, heavy the game is on your body as well. Like it just, it, it is really important that we have not just a strong 10, but that 11th and our training partners as well. They've got to be ready to step on, on court at any given moment and being able to use that um, as, as much as we can and, and make sure that we're keeping our players um, you know, fresh and ready and ready to go in, in any given circumstance is going to be really important. And what's going to be the most important takeaway, the most important focus heading into next season for you guys? Um, I think it's really about just doubling down on what we've already started, I think. Um, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Like We are a startup. It's, it's really about understanding what worked, what didn't. We've been in constant review mode at the moment over the last... Um, you know, sort of six weeks. And what we've learned out of that review process has been extraordinary. So I'm really excited to go, um, you know, implement those things that we do have identified as needing to change, but also really embracing the fact that we didn't exist this time last year. And what we managed to do was really incredible and really doubling down on some of those things as well. And you say that and you guys were knocking on the door of finals in yeah. your very first season. So hopefully yeah. we go one better. Absolutely. I think so. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure hosting today. Thank you, Shay, for joining us once again two weeks okay. in a row. <laughs> That's all we have time for today. Thank you to CRT Equine Supplies. Start with CRT. Want a chance to win a 2H straight load horse float? Visit crt.com.au slash equine2024. T's and C's apply. Centre Court will be back next week. Thank you so much for joining us.